Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Uh, I'll be honest, it's been about two-ish weeks since I have recorded. Uh, and a great deal has happened since then. War were declared, that's pretty cool. So, um, obviously it doesn't affect me personally. I mean, actually that isn't obvious. In today's interconnected world, no one has any idea how close anyone is with any other given situation or scenario. I like such an scenario, though. Obviously, my heart goes out to the people of Ukraine, and I admire their spirit. Uh, but that's one of those things that isn't exactly, like, super relevant for, like, uh, an LP of a 2014 video game, you know? But art is how we decorate space and time, and how we often think about this sort of thing. Glad I checked the map, jeez. Lord of the Rings being a, um... World War-inspired, uh, work. Somewhat indirectly, but, you know. It is a technically World War-inspired, uh... Hey, man. Can I, can I just go, please? <laughs> Great, you don't get a promotion or anything, you're just a dog or a cat. Uh, Lord of the Rings is obviously a World War inspired uh, work of art. You worked with Sauron. You forged the rings of power at his side. Our motives were the same, to heal a land wounded by war. My weakness was to be seduced by evil that seemed fair. He is the master of lies. It's true. It's a well-known fact. Uh, let's do some story stuff, shall we? Man, if you're that old, it would be infinitely more convenient to just die, wouldn't it? Thank you. I found the Mithril Hammer. Oh, but she's voiced by like a totally normal lady. Can your flames show me why my soul was denied death? Oh. Oh, I just remembered this scene. I was like watching this for the first time and, pff, until you, just now. You are the victim of a blood sacrifice. Naturally. Can the curse be broken? Destroy the Black Hand and his followers and claim Mordor. No men of Gondor will come to my head. <laughs> Do it yourself. You don't need them. Your power begets followers, willing or otherwise. An orc army. How? How do I do this? Your answers are in the fortress nearby, but what you seek may not be there for much longer. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, I briefly wondered if, um... The future must be met. I briefly wondered if, like, it might be smart for me to, like, just do a shorter episode because, like... The news has affected me, uh... Not personally, but... It is upsetting, and it's affected some of my friends, you know, internet friends, but it's not like a spoiler to say that I live in the United States, you know, but it has affected some of my internet friends, uh, deeply. I don't know anyone who has died, and they don't know anyone who has died yet either, though, so that's good. 
But yeah, I don't like it's weird because like sometimes I'm not even sure if it's the right thing to do to talk about like this sort of serious uh, geopolitical upheaval in uh, Let's Play. But like, it's not like Lord of the Rings is super irrelevant in terms of war. Is this what you? Okay. Yeah. It is not them we seek, but what they carry. I will save them nonetheless. Don't oh yes, I put on a new skin for Talion, by the way. I uh, I do like the look of the extra skins, although I think in the rain his face looks a little squeaky. Lie within this fortress. If we brand those archers, we can build our army and save these men at the same time. Ability unlocked, brand. When you drain enemies, you apply your brand, causing them to become your followers. To brand enemies, hold B. So this is the ability that this game has been building towards the whole game. It's a cool ability. And you can hear he says, it's yours, master. Gondorians are invaders. Men are scourged. These villains take our lands, but no more. Now we take them back, and we take them You are made to be cowed well. by terror. And like, the, the ethics of it are kind of brushed over because they're orcs, and like, we've been brutalizing them all game. And so like, this is a way for an orc to stay alive, but still be useful to me. The next Oh, shit. Oh, it's you. Can I... Will you turn, sir? Yeah? I, I will say, as a guard, he's not bad. The sight that will pierce your mortal Look will. Soft skins, here to slaughter us. Not today. The Pardon time me? of man is over. Quip a bloody. But yeah, this is a this is a crazy, super weird new mechanic. And like, for what this game has been building towards, like we we are looking at a particularly dark view of Lord of the Rings. And part of it is because of who we are. We're not like the super great mega elves that uh, a lot of the stories are about. These aren't like the... Whoops. Well, that ain't good. These aren't... um. Italian isn't a really cool guy. He's a he is two halves of a cool guy, but those halves are different people who have different opinions. Archers, we can build our army and save these men at the same time. Are invaders. Men are these villains take our lands, but no more. And yeah, like I said, the morality of this is kind of brushed over, but like it is meant this is meant to be an evil act. This is stealing the will, agency, and um, autonomy of a being. And, like, it's an orc, and, like, orcs are typically treated pretty bad, but, like... But this game does, like, is willing to go with the idea of, like, oh, hey, just because we don't like them doesn't mean this is an acceptable thing to do. And, like, this sort of, like, this is, like, evil, you know? In uh, Dungeons and Dragons, a mass, massive, massive inspiration for from Lord of the Rings. Uh, necromancy is an automatically evil act. Uh, I don't know if um. Hey man, what's going on? I don't know if uh. Can I go up? Thank you. I don't know if that's still the case. I don't remember if uh in Fifth Edition they have changed the rules so. You can do necromancy without being automatically made evil. 
But there were also some lawful good necromancy spells, so the rules are all over the place. What I'm getting at here is just casting the spell would make you evil. But there's a, a thought process that, like, necromancy isn't necessarily evil. It is kind of weird to screw with the balance of life and death like that, but that isn't necessarily the wrong thing. Oh, yeah. So... Some people think that um, enchantment, mind-affecting spells that change the mind of a living being, is the problem. My eyes are yours. So, the problem with Arkham Combat is the game is built around a group. So how do you evolve that? You give a group to the player. This blows the game wide open. Like now, these people can be distractions to me. For me. <laughs> I have soldiers, you know? They'll help me in fights. What's even stranger is that like, as you might have seen, there's a button you hit to turn them on, to make them go. <laughs> Which means you can have sleeper agents. And because of this game's system of... Uh, the, the orc leaders, this means that yes, you can brand leaders. All that stuff with Ratbag was just... Queen warned us to wait until the end of the battle. Then the all, all that stuff with Ratbag is essentially just a little, a little teaser, you know, a little I taste. You to... Did you have something for me? Like you get, you get that orc to ally you because it's mutually beneficial, and it's you know almost his idea. But in this case, it's Celebrimbor's idea, and he's pushing you. That's a big one. I imagine the, th the the crown that you literally always have on is a pretty big one, you know? So yeah, Keller Brimble was a badass archer, which we already knew, but there's evidence of it in life. I do really love the look of Elven Swords. You can see that it might be glowing because of nearby orcs, as is the case for many Elven Blades. It might just be the smoke, but look, I want that to be canon because I think that's fun and cool. I like it. The man himself. Again, you can see that this is very clearly the Peter Jackson Sauron. Also, hey, that's what the DLC is about. I think we looked at the DLCs last episode, but like, you know, the whole thing with that is, is like, yes, it's a spoiler for this scene especially, but like, it's also literally the DLC. You click on Steam and it's like, buy the DLC, play as Celebrimbor, you know? Take him to Mordor. Same energy as take him to Detroit. <laughs> Yoink. Got your autonomy. See, this is one of those things where, like, the game actually does not have enough time to talk about this very much. I would actually say that this game does not have a good ending. And not like there's a good ending and there's a bad ending, but it's actually a, a morally gray ending and an okay ending. But what I mean is, this game ends kind of poorly. Like, yes, there's an ending and stuff, but it is just isn't particularly good, you know? 
it is one thing to kill these Uruk, it is another to make but them they got the sequel it is and that gift. ends a little more we uh can use the weapon of the enemy against him yeah there you go so this is initially i talked about how this guy is just aragorn you know like he looks like aragorn but he's got two swords like Geralt of Rivia, you know? He is he is a hybrid Assassin's Creed, Lord of the Rings, and, uh, like, Witcher podcast. He is from the New Tens era of video game fantasy character design. He's just ripping the other, like, fantasy guys, as well as, uh... As well as other people, like, Peter Jackson's Aragorn. And to a lesser extent, Faramir. Oh, yeah. And so, like, all the enemies that were problems for us now are problems for the other enemies. Wait, can I just... Sure can. So let's take a look at these guys if we can. You can see that there are handprints on them. Because obviously when we brand them, we do it by grabbing them like we do, you know? It's a, it's a whole thing. It's pretty obvious. Pretty open and shut, you would say. Um, however, this is something that's pretty interesting. It also looks like the white hand of Saruman. Uh, in Lord of the Rings, naturally, orcs that are in the servitude of Saruman, uh, or uruk -hai in the movies, if you prefer. Um gain paint that indicates that they are a warrior of Saruman on them. Uh, and the paint is just Saruman's hand. I think it was painted on in the books, like proper painted on. Uh, but in the movie, you know, you can see that Saruman dips his hand in paint. Uh, I suppose the talk's gone. <laughs> dips his hand in paint and, and uh, splooshes it on the guy's face. This might be TMI, but at one point I did. I was baking something with uh, my girlfriend, and I did dip my hand in, in flour, and I slapped her ass, and I was like, the white hand of Sodomon. She thought it was funny, so it was okay. That'll teach you who's in charge. But if it wasn't okay, I wouldn't. I would have apologized because that's the right thing to do. The correct thing to do is apologize. In case marking somebody as your warrior is the wrong thing to do in the relationship. Um. But yeah, I really like how the. Anyway, back on topic. I really like how the brand evokes that idea. Also, I saw that that guy had a thing. I don't know how to actually activate it. I don't really care that much because I'll just do it all off screen. Hey, can I get some help here? Thank you. And yeah, you just call guys to you, and that's super cool. And now that he's dealing with that one, I can just brand you. And like, I just want to watch these guys work. Oh, but that guy's dead. Yeah, so, like, the damage that orcs put out is apparently pretty high. Can we... No, okay. That's alright. I wanted to see if I could do one of my other abilities. Yoink. But yeah, in addition to the nemesis system... This is what I was talking about when I was describing how the Nemesis system does allow the player to interact with it a little bit, but not as much as I would like. Because, um, like, it is cool that you can do this with a Nemesis system. But the thing is... Let me just scooch back here. Um, but the thing is, like... 
the the thing with it is you being able to kill guys, get in their head, and join the orc army by making your own separate to them is is why it works, you know? And it's so cool, and it's not in any other games because I think it was copyrighted by... And that I learned. Find an orc leader, make him a war chief, and all his soldiers will be yours. But where am I to lead this army of mine? Bring them to me, and I will show you. Well, you certainly seem trustworthy. Anyway, bye. Here's a priceless artifact in your carpet. Hope that does something for you. So, um, for those who haven't seen the movies or haven't seen them in a while, recall that Boromir, during the uh, Counts of Elrond, build an army. We shall command one. Yeah. We to find an Uruk captain to dominate and make our own. There is a slaver near here named Grublik. We will make him serve our cause. <laughs> oh yeah. Thinking about the fresh taste of fat of the tangy taste of fresh rat meat. We don't know shit about him though. But we can work on that. So, recall that Boromir argues that having the ring is a gift and that we should try to use it against him. Um, and this is tied together into causing his death, like, directly in the movie. Um, they double down on that uh, a little more in, in the movie as well. It's not as played up in the books. Um... Again, that's one of those things in the in the movie that I think is a really smart choice. Um, it does mean that the character of Bormir kind of gets run away with by just making him like, Ring man, give me that ring, boy. You know? But it is an interesting idea. The problem is, is that evil is an inherently corrupting force. And like, you can make the point that like, you can do bad things and not become a bad person in the real world. The problem is, is that it's not even that this is the ring wor the real world the ring world it's not even that this is the ring the real world or that that's the problem the problem is that there's a literally corrupting magical artifact that makes you evil the more you use it Rublik the floga the flesh from your bones let's get started Command. After dominating a captain, you can issue a command. Send your captain to murder another captain, or try to become a warchief's bodyguard. So this means that in addition to the stuff earlier with Ratbag... Wait, maybe we should just clear some out. I know that this will handicap our army, but... Yeah, we got the shield guy on our side. He was able to stand up and be a little brick wall for me, which is pretty great. Oh, I see your head peeking out. Peekaboo. The fucking arrow is hitting me. Ah, uh, it's funny. Oh, yeah. We'll see who's the strongest maggot. Ooh, he's invulnerable to stealth. Kind of getting worried about him being so close to the edge here. Oh, 
There we go. We need him alive. There we go. Create a power struggle by sending him to murder another captain. Oh, yeah. Tox the knife. So we literally just throw him away and then he goes into the nether sphere. He's ours. We must now make this captain a bodyguard if he is ever to be a war chief. It is from first strike of thunder that is soon born a storm. So yeah, it's a thing that Boromir argues where he's like, the ring's awesome when we should use it against Sauron. And like, it would work if only the ring wasn't literally an evil artifact and putting it on makes your mind go boinkers yoinkers, you know? Like, that's the problem here. It's not that it's good or evil, it's that it's the object is evil, not the act. And this is one of those things of like, hey, maybe we can do a, you know, an evil thing for a good reason. Maybe we can do this sort of thing. Join me or face the end of my sword, maggots. Go away. I serve another. I must help Kublik eliminate all those who challenge him. Like, imagine you're like, you know what? I don't want to join you. And then, what is this? Four, five people's heads explode? Like, you would be like, you know what? Maybe you do have some good points, Grublik. I'm excited to see your civic uh, uh, opinions. I don't really know if this is what the elves meant when they said that, Celebrimbor. Oh, I was just jumping to that thing. That's okay. Yeah, this also solves the logistical problems of like, hey, how are our soldiers going to eat? Because it's not a problem because all we're doing is just stealing the enemy food. There's a very good line that I very much like in The Art of War. Um, about how like a single grain of rice that you steal from the enemy is worth 10 grains of rice that you bring from home. Because like... If you, if you have a guy carrying rice, you know, it's going to take him nine days worth of rice to get up to the front of the battlefield. And then he's going to give that one grain of rice to a, uh, to a soldier, you know? But if you can just steal from your enemy, then, like, you know, that's way more rice. I guess it's not, like, I guess it's, like, four rice there and five rice back, and then they give one to the other guy. Look, the point is, is that logistics are what win or lose a war. The problem is, you know, winning a war logistically after a certain point. Because, like, when it's just, like, a bunch of guys just hitting each other with sticks, then, like, war is, is truly just about strength, you know? But in something like this, like, when war gets, like, big enough, then yes... Logistics are the problem. Run. I reward your ambition with my bloodlust. Who's spotting? Oh, you. Go to sleep. Ignore that. So yeah, it's funny, like, normally these are things that would, like, fail a mission. Like, this happening when he gets his speech out and everyone hears it, that would fail a mission. But because we're on his side, we get to hear those voice lines, and that's good for us, you know? Now that we have our hunter, let us stalk our prey. But yeah, you know, the logistics are, are what make a war, and that's cool.
Okay, I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to do another episode, but this is a lot of fun. I'm happy I'm doing this. Uh, but I have an Alfred. That's short for Alfredric. Oh, he said it, by the way. He has chosen death. You saw he said it. <laughs> uh, remember that. I'm going to talk about it in a little bit on the next episode, but I'll see you guys next time. I have an Alfred that's short for Alfredric. This has been Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. And even though like we are seeing almost all of the story stuff now, I do recommend that you play this game for yourself because, damn, this game is fun. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.